with maybe the happiest man in the world. He plays for one of the most lit bands on earth. I think you're now a Hoko representative. You got a lot going on, man. Sam from Drain, how's it going? Do it. Oh shit, what's up? <laughs> yo, dude, how you guys doing, man? I'm doing well, dude. Yo, for real. Thank, oh my god. Thank you for having us, man. This is dope. You're watching at home, this is crazy. We're in a mini studio in a rainy Chicago day. Epic. Yes, this is dope, dude. Thank you guys, man. You might be the happiest person I've ever met. And I don't know how you do it. I feel like it's a gimmick. I feel like maybe when the cameras are off when you're not on stage, are you just folded arms grump the entire time? Or is this how you live almost 24-7? It's all a lie, dude. My fiance is fucking laughing behind the camera now because she sees the other end of it. No, I mean, yo, here's the thing. I'm very stoked to be here. Always. This is the happy place. You don't want to see me at the unhappy place. Like, if... We spend we work so hard to get here. When you're here, you want you gotta love it, right? Of course I'm stoked, dude, but I don't know, man. You see me in aisle seven at the grocery store, I'm fucking pissed. What bro. are what, what are you pissed about? Everything, yeah. dude, to be honest. I'm try, I actually am trying to chill out, but uh, you you know, people in the grocery store pissing me off. Uh, anything. It could be this simple the grocery cart being too far on the other side of the lane. Mm -hmm. and I'm like Oh squeaky wheel got oh, forbid. Squeaky bed. wheel, yeah. someone one of these. A little side oh, eye. I'm like, a side I'm like, in the grocery store? What could you fucking possibly want? Am I? Is this going live? I'm sorry. It's not live. I will we keep would, that. We would love it if you didn't cuss as much, but if you let a few fly, I'm gonna allow it. Okay. Dude, I am Q101. We keep it very respectful for you guys. Sorry. Objection. I'm done. No. Yeah. Little stuff, man. I'm in my happy place. I'm in my zone. I'm with my my best friends, my family. We're we're feeling good, man. Are you? Do you have road rage? A little bit, not as much, but uh -huh. I'm not gonna lie. I am the reason for the road rage. On is the that other right? Way. I'm not gonna lie. I got a scooter. And that basically was, I, I was like, Sam, oh. Sam, scooters, no good. Dude, Vespa Army, dude. I'm like, oh, there's no more rules. And now when I'm in the van, I'm like, it's like a big Vespa. There's just still no rules. It's not good. Yeah. DMV I, is not happy with me right now. I, I, I've never been on a Vespa. Can you still listen to tunes while you're on it? You know, you can, but I'm not going to lie. I, I like the little rumble. I, oh, I, like okay, right. I like just hearing the motor. A skilled driver, probably. Me, I'm like, dude, I need as much focus as I can because I'm just whipping it, dude, going crazy and just like, well, I feel like the mayor just like waving at people. They don't even know who I am. I was like, what's up? What's up? Yeah, all over Santa Cruz tearing it up. Do you have it? I'm. This will sound like an insulting question, but I'm asking it for a reason. Do you have a driver's license? I, I, got, I got a license. I'm okay, good. All right. I just want to make sure because I'm I, curious <laughs> now. What was the first thing when you got a license? Do you remember like the car music that you had at that point in your life? Because I yeah. feel like that sticks with you forever. Dude, that's actually a dope question. No one's ever hit. Yo, I had a CCR Greatest Hits, and I jammed that for like the first little bit. And, and uh, that, this is still like pre-USB, pre-aux. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, So I was just CD. Uh, I was just burning CDs. That, and then I burned that overkill, Years of Decay. I just spun that record all day. I was like, like 16. It was dope. Yeah. Yo, Drain's been everywhere this year. I want to talk about all the tours you've been on, all the sick stuff you've done. You did mention your fiance earlier. You got engaged this year, right? Dude, I got engaged, man. It's been a, it's been a, truly 2023 is gonna be a tough year to top. I'm really not gonna lie. All across the board, <laughs> like the band has been really going good, and like, I don't know, man. I, I love. I mean, I'm actually getting real for a sec. You know, I, I love, I love, I love being the band, and I, I mean, the band is 100 percent my life. But I would be lying if it was like the only thing that brings me joy, because there's other stuff. And for some some people, I know that that really is, and that's sick. Because this, this, you could do this forever. I talked to Code Orange yesterday, and Jamie was like, "I do the band. The band is all I do. The band is everything I have." Dude, she was saying like, "Yo," and and, and I'm, I'm very fortunate for that, man. Like, I love the band. It is 100 percent my life. But then I'm, I'm very blessed. I got I got 200 percent of life to live. That's the thing, man. I got I love my family. I love my my home life. Um, yeah, man. So as the band's been up, I was like, dude, I I, I don't want to put other parts of life on hold. So I, um, I'm still well, engaged. Well, yeah. Tell me about that proposal. What went down? Were you nervous at all? How did dude, it all go down? Yo, I'm not gonna lie, man. It was. Uh, I don't get nervous a, a ton. I was definitely nervous. So yeah, I, uh, you know, man, I um, I have, I have my, my folks come up. Uh, we live in Santa Cruz, but uh, my family's all from LA. So they came up uh, as a surprise and naturally. Got on the Vespa, <laughs> took, a, took a nice cruise, and uh, yeah, we, we, we pulled into a nice little lookout, and uh, and I, I proposed, you know, drop down to a knee, I'm a, I'm a gentleman, drop down to a knee, and uh, yeah, man, it was awesome, that my, my, my family and uh, my, my fiance's family come out, oh, they, were, they were hiding in the hillside, and uh, our bass player, Sam J, I actually had him in incognito mode, stashed in the bushes, taking pictures, um, it was really cool, man. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh Let's go. <laughs> you get close zoom on that one. No, I'm, so, I'm stoked, man. I'm glad you told that story because I need you to know I've been in a relationship with the love of my life for a year now. 
Drain almost cost me my relationship. Dude, yo, on be you gotta fill me in on, so, on why that is. So here's what happened. So Drain announces the sick tour. It's Dude. Drain and Drug Church and Jell and Never Any Game and Chicago gets incendiary. Dude. Insanely stacked. Like crazy. Couldn't believe my eyeballs when I when I freaking saw it on Twitter. I buy tickets immediately. Um, I, that's a show, like, there are some shows that, like, oh, I'm gonna go to the Giggle to be fun. There are shows that feel like events. That felt like a party. The whole week leading up to it, it was like, yo, Drain is at the Metro on Friday. This is Dude. so lit. So what happens is, I'm gearing up my body, my mind for this show. I'm gonna pit hard. I get a call from my girl that afternoon. I go, that's weird. She normally doesn't call me around this time. She calls me. She's crying. Oh, she geez. goes... Yo, I just fell in the street. I twisted up my ankle really bad. I need to go to the hospital. So we take her around. We take care of her. We get her back home. She's got medicine. She's got a murder mystery she's watching. She's <laughs> chilling out. And we make eye contact with each other. It's pretty late in the evening now. And she goes, so are you going to that show? I go, baby, it's drained. I got to go to that show. <laughs> it's, and, and the thing is, uh, those who know know where it's like I'm asked this question but it's it's mostly a statement like you know you're staying home yo what's your your girl's name uh, Mackenzie Mackenzie yo thank you Mackenzie for allowing this man to come that was historic uh, and you know I, I feel it you, when the murder mis the murder mystery's out you know you're, you're there you're there you got the cold case files out you're, you're occupied for at least six hours at least so, five six hours so this is this is what goes down so she's all laid up she's good to go she's in bed she's comfy. I, I get to the gig, I catch uh, gel. Never ending game was so lit. I like Dude. blew me away. And then Drug Church comes on, Patrick Kinlan, he's, you know, all holy. They're amazing. They're incredible. I start feeling so guilty after Drug Church. I'm in the lobby of the Metro. I'm ready to go home. I was going to skip out on you guys, no offense, and incendiary because I felt like I was being a bad boyfriend. And she takes me all cap. She goes, No, you're there. I'm fine. You stay there. And then we partied for the next two sets. Mackenzie, yo, put a ring on it, dude. Put a <laughs> ring on it. Mackenzie, shout out, dude. Thank you so much. No, you know what? It was it was a night. I'm glad you were there. That's what I was like. We did a little shout out for, you know, today. I was like, I don't know who was at the Metro. And like, because that really was like, the whole fest was dope. Yes. The, the, the whole run was incredible. But that show in particular, just the, the, the way it worked out. Like, I think it was that Incendiary and Never in the Game were on a run. Yes. And they had a Chicago Day booked as well. And because it, it was the same weekend as tied down. So exactly. I think Incendiary wanted to do a Chicago show. And you were like, what if we just create the greatest lineup of all time? Dude, it was incredible. Like, I got the poster framed. It was, it was, that was one of those. You know, you go and like, it felt like an event. So it's cool that like, somehow it seemed like we're never going to top our Chicago experience. And then we get to come back to Riot Fest, and incredible, man. You ran yeah. into Scott Ian from Anthrax this morning. Dude, I did this morning, man. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of nutty, dude. Like, I, there's this a is lot, all There's new. a lot of that. I, I, I mean, if you want to drop names, feel free. But there's just there's a lot of people out there that are starting to go. How about this Drain Band? These guys dude, are pretty cool. It's it's just crazy, man. Like, I, you know, I think that's the thing. It's easy. Like, when I'm on the other end too, you don't you don't really know. You don't know, and it's like we're all just regular people that like. Literally just played on floors and stuff, and that's we were stoked with it too. It just you know it kind of just naturally grew. We wanted to keep going, but like to then be like, hey man, like Post Malone's coming to your Salt Lake show. I'm like, what? And I I, I don't believe it. That's where I'm at. I just don't believe stuff, you know, like because there's a lot of stuff that you know maybe it's talk, and then all of a sudden there's Post, and we're just chilling, and then there's Scott Ian like DM and like, yo, love the song. Anthrax is playing in SF. Like, let me know if you guys want to come through. And like, he was getting in his car this morning, and I'm like, I'm with my my fiance, with my little brother. They don't they don't know. And I'm like, yo, that's Scotty. And he like puts his bat down, kind of like looks, and like says what's up, and like the, doesn't get in his car, and like comes over, says what's up, we say goodbye, and he leaves, and comes back, like takes a pic. I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is insane. Like, what is our life, man? And it's only possible because of you know, a tiny piece tiny piece because of ourselves and the work and whatever and the music is even a tinier piece than that but it's because everybody else has been really like believes in what we're doing and so it's it's awesome man like it's crazy so i gotta get into the nitty-gritty of hardcore for a second and I, and I and i think i know where you stand on this but it's what's going on in the scene right now and i want to get your opinion so 
You guys went on this lit tour this year, and it was sponsored by Monster Energy. Now, yeah. full transparency, this interview is sponsored by a bank and yeah. traffic to not uh, smoke and drive. Yeah. But there was recently, and I don't know how online you are, but some people got heated at Scowl because oh. they're in that Taco Bell commercial, which I think is lame. They should get paid if they if they want to get paid. Dude. Does the growth of hardcore almost this rapid fire, you know, ascent over the last few years? We both watched Turnstile. Yo. The, the only band that played after them was the Foo Fighters last night. Dude. Does the growth of hardcore scare you at all? Because it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Dude, like, and again, this is like, I'm a, I'm, before I even speak my piece, I'm I'm relatively, you know, newer and, you know, I've been going to shows like a little over 10 plus years, you know, like, I, I still feel like a new Jack, you know, in, in that world. But like, truth, man, it gets me pumped. I think it's awesome. And, and here's the thing, too. It's not for no reason. Like, it's because... These companies see what's happening. They know, yo, there is a whole world that maybe we turn the blind eye to, you know, um, you know, in the past and like, you know, Monsters obviously sponsored bands for like decades and stuff, but like just different things like that, like like they talk about things, Scout, our, our team, yo, the amount of money we've given to Taco Bell, all of us collectively, I'm like, the fact they want to pay it back, you know, they got military gun Scout, dude, yo, it's burnt if someone's like, hey man, we're going to ask you to do something completely different, be not yourself, and here's the paycheck. But when these people are like, yo, man, we just want you, we want your, your your music and our thing. We want you to just be you. We just believe in you. Dude, who can knock that? That's the coolest thing. And, like, you know, I don't really, I'll be honest, I don't really know this is weird to say, so I don't really care. Before we linked with Monster, I was a little skeptical on the fence. And we got, you know, I set up a call, talked to the dude. Right out the gates, he's like, look, man, I'm going to be honest. I'm a hardcore dude. I used to manage turmoil. I, you know, work with Suicidal. I got this position, and I just want to, like, help out bands I, I like and I believe in. What is cooler than that? You know, what's cooler than me? Like, yo, it's, don't change. But it's literally what I'm trying to do here. It, it, yes. it, dude, it's the coolest thing. So, like, I love it, man. And, like, I, I feel very thankful to be a band in the turnstile era of the world. You know, like, well, I, it's a privilege to be a band at the same time as them and to be able to watch them on a fest. Because, dude, like, that's my favorite band, man. And, like, not just in terms of the music and everything. The way that Knock Loose, Turnstile, these bands have broken down doors with such grace and then bands like myself and Scow and you know our friends and contemporaries get to walk through is because those guys are paving the way you know the Code Orange is doing like Grey Day Knock Loose did Grey Day tour it's like I've got so much respect man and it's like I don't know and I hope I hope that we get to open a new door and walk through those doors and then the kids in a couple of years they're gonna they're gonna see and they're gonna get to carry on and like I don't know man I just think when you do what you're doing is the undeniable truth and you can't really you can't really fake that and you can't really disagree with that man like your favorite bands i maybe don't even like you know outside of the music yo when you see kids freaking out you see these bands and you just know like yo that's real that's from the heart dude you can't knock that that's the realest thing ever i, I love it man I, I love that so you're here now let's talk about how you got here because i feel like the first time that drain came on my radar was sound and fury the year that half heart played 2019 dude. was that because i feel like it was like that sound and fury uh, which is, for those that don't know, a hardcore fest out in Southern California. And then you guys did LDB right before the pandemic, which is a hardcore fest in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. And then when things opened up again, you guys were on the list of like, all right, they, they were at one spot here. Now they're bigger. We've got to go see this band. Was Sound and Fury sort of the start of all that? Dude, you know, I think that was that was the start of the good, like, momentum there. And, like, um, you know, just for context, like like you said, that, that's the big fest. That is... That's our like rock and Rio. You know what I mean? Like that's the the big one. <laughs> I, I've never thought about those two in comparison, but you're exactly right. It's a great oh, way to describe it. That's the big one, man. And like we, you know, they used to do it. They stopped doing it for a couple of years. So I never went before the break, but once they came back in 2016, all of us we would just go. You know, we went every year and like, so we played 2019, but 2018 is that the year? Okay. So, 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 so a band dropped in 2018, and so there's some reason a band had to drop. And dude, all these our friends and people were like, yo, like. You should put Drain on. You should put Drain just like online, you know, adding Sound and Fury. And then finally, you know, Sound and Fury, they repose like, yo, Drain is your friend. I'm freaking out. I'm running through my studio apartment calling these guys our friends. They're like, dude, they posted about you guys on Twitter. I'm like, I know, dude. Um, and so he hit us up and he's like, yo, man, like, we, we, you know, we, we are, we know, a band dropped. We want you guys, we're going to do it proper. We're going to wait till the following year and do it proper and give you guys a full, you're not going to get like a leftover spot. You're going to, we're going to do it. So, um, shout out to Martine and Riley, man. Um, and they put us on for 19 and it was like the way that that worked. And I've kind of explained it to people like sum up. We've been hitting it hard. We were touring quite a bit and it was like little, I don't explain it. Maybe, maybe like, okay, we played Chicago. For example, on that, that exact time, Chicago, bigger city, 
Truthfully, we weren't really playing good shows. But those smaller little cities, those in-betweens, those Midwest little small towns, towns in the South, where there was kids like, yo, this band that no one really knows came here and now we know them. So you get 30 of those, all these little different cities, all these kids that came out to this festival and they're all in the same room watching us play. I was like, that's when it clicked. I'm like, oh, this band's doing something, you know? And then after that, it really started. All the big cities started popping in in the basement of that venue. They were doing merch in the basement of Sound of Fury. And uh, the Rev table approached us and they're like, hey, we want to do a record. And we, I'm not going to lie, if you're listening or whatever, you know, not to be that guy, like, I emailed Rev. I mailed them copies of the demo. like, the, And they put it on their website. It's like, yo, submit demos here. I was submitting left and right. <laughs> Nothing. We even met the a &R dude, had a friend of ours send it to him. He was a, you know, a mutual friend, not really feeling it. They saw it live, and he was like, I, I don't want to wait to send this email. Like, that was insane. Let's do a record. And we we're just like, whoa. I was literally selling a kid a shirt. And like, like, did you guys just get a record deal or whatever? Like, I don't know. I think so. I don't really know how this works. Um, it was there. And so, yeah, man, we put the record out. Dude, so insane. We, we play LDB. It's also a funny one. I hope no one thinks I'm a POS for this, but I'm just going to be honest. Uh, that's February of 2020. Yes. This was, early. this was the last real hardcore thing before COVID. Dude, so check it out. So we just finished a tour with like Higher Power, Take Offense, um, and Life's Question. Uh, we did a run, and we're going there. I get off the plane in Kentucky, dude, and I'm, I'm dying. I don't know what's going on. I actually I went to the ER. That's the first thing I did in Kentucky. I went to the ER. Um and I was like, I don't know what's going on. They're like, I mean, we don't really know. I guess there's a flu. We, we don't really know what to test you for. I got COVID, bro. I don't even know what that is. And like, again, this is where it's gonna be POS mode, but I'm just being honest. We're small, we were such a small band, and we still are such a small band. It's like, yo, we cannot not play this fest, you know? So I'm dying all day, and then it's like, all right, time to play. And I'm like, well, we gotta go game face on and just gave it a hundred. And it, you know, the video came out when our record dropped, and it's COVID, everyone's at home, and so um the video, I, uh, honestly, the video helped us gain a lot of traction. A lot of people saw it. That was their so first that's, video. So that's what's up because, that, first of all, that's crazy because oh. I have that set in my mind and to Dude. know that you were struggling is oh. so wild because that's all we had for a little bit. So you guys, and also on that show, that One Step Closer set, Dude. that's all we had for like 18 months. And yeah. it was like, I just it was a physical feeling watching those videos on YouTube going like, Get me back to this, please. Yeah, dude, it's crazy, man. That's that like that video. You know, it's uh, this dude, uh, my man Steven, He runs this thing called One Nine Seven Media. Go follow them; they're awesome. He's the man. And like again, it's just kind of crazy, full circle. Of, like that dude has filmed us like fifty times playing like backyard, basement, garage, like. And so then he, I remember we were talking. He's like, dude, your video's going like really. It's getting like a lot of traction, like like more than my normal, more than your normal, our normal. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. Okay, I got two more things I want to talk to you about. Let's run it, dude. We, we just found out how you got on Rev. Yeah. Last record came out on Epitaph. Tell me all about that experience. Dude, and again, I'm just being honest. I don't know if I'm supposed to, you know, whatever. No, be honest. You're good. Yeah, You're good. dude, I'm, I'm be honest. I got no poker face. Anything, I'm only know how to tell the truth. So our record dropped, and it's like COVID, like early on in COVID. This is uh, the Tiger King era of COVID, you know? Um, our thing drops, and within the first week, Epitaph hit us up, and we're like, hey, like, we like your record. How would you guys feel like doing a record? Or maybe we might, like, we're interested in, like, buying that record off of Rev and, like, doing a reissue right out the gates. And we're like, dude, again, dudes that, like, we played to, like, 100 kids. We have done some cool fest, but, like, we're not, we don't, I still don't know Jack. We still don't know anything, but um, we're freaking out. And so, and we're not really working out the buy the buyout thing. So we're like, dude, let's just stay in the loop. But we really do want to, like, give this first record the proper love like whenever we get to tour again we want to go out we want to get to play these songs and like really give them the love they deserve and they were so cool man they were like a lot of people we would expect and we've heard would be like yo if you don't want it the offer's gone you know like take it or leave it and they were like dude we'll wait keep it let's just stay in the loop and so we stayed in contact and slowly started working on stuff and so it, you know people dude three year gap between records uh, for a band of our size like could be a make or break people could forget um Thank you for everyone who stuck around and for who waited. And I hope the record lived up to the wait, man. Thank you, guys. It absolutely did. So real quick before you go, because we've got people crowning around now, that makes me think maybe we're running out of time. Dude. You guys were just in Japan. Yes. And I thought that was so sick to begin with. And then I saw the video of the Osaka show. Dude. And it was like, oh, my God, this is, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. What was that tour like? 
Dude, it was incredible, man. Straight up, shout out to my man Koba. He does Blood Axe, my man Cooney, driving us around. Dude, the way, uh, it was a trip, man. I mean, we like, I really didn't know what to expect. We went out, and truthfully, like, I think the language barrier is a little bit bigger than I, than I was expecting. Uh, and so it's the craziest thing of like walking in a room and people are excited. Like, you can tell they're like, they recognize you and, and they're so stoked. And like, we, we can't talk about it. So we're literally just like hugging people. We're like, yeah like so stoked man and like then they just like know the words and like every show is awesome and we got just treated like just like family there and it was so cool man and we did like a week there and went straight from our last show in tokyo to germany to start like a three-week european tour um so it's been crazy honestly it was crazy today playing a fest and talking this is our first show in the u.s after this whole summer and be like yo jump and be like all right like they know <laughs> they know what i'm saying like oh this is crazy dude i i i couldn't stay for all your sex i was talking to graham from high viz kind of when uh when you guys were playing oh. but i wanted to be sure to catch the first song and i was kind of curious like well you know there's barricades it's a fest i wonder what drain's gonna be like i was everything i would want and more i mean that dude, was so sick congratulations was, man thank you yo so you missed the end right there i missed the end what happened dude. at the end Let's just say, man, respectfully, I hope I'm wrong, but maybe maybe the first and last Riot Fest for Drain. I hope not, though. I love you guys. I'm so, I didn't mean any trouble. What do you do? Dude, you know what, man? Like I said, we, we don't know, bro. We're just we like, we're just like, yo, let's just do what we do. We go up, we play, we just want kids to go wild. You know, and like the way we look at it, yo, if we're getting kids wild, we're doing our like job. That's our job. Um, the kids are trying to get on the stage. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Riot Fest may have they 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 uh they hired the the NFL front line on security. Dude, some kids, shout out to all you kids, man. They're getting mowed down. Um, it was like a little chaos. Like, you know, it's rough. We got like having to have like, a whole crew here. Like our managers here, and I, I look over and he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, dude, the, the stage manager was was not thrilled. So Margaret, thank you. I'm sorry. I oh. love you guys. It was epic. Uh, and you know what though. That's what's cool though. That's so cool that a big fest. We're playing with the postal service tonight. We're like, yo, we're gonna get this hardcore band on, and we didn't play like a rinky dink stage. It's a big stage. Um, that's our world. So whoever didn't know saw, and now they're like, yo, that's what hardcore looks like. That's awesome, man. Thank you for the chance, and uh, uh, all the love to everyone at Riot Fest. We hope did not burn any bridges, man. Y'all are awesome. Um, this has been epic, dude. Sam, you're the best. Thank you so much. Dude, you're the man. Go support dude. Drain, and it's been a pleasure, Let's go, man. Let's go, dude. Thank you guys, man. And that's out. There we go. Dude.